Ladies and gentlemen, just who are going to be the best heroes in Overwatch Competitive Season 14? And of course, who are going to be, well, the worst? I'm joined by the wonderful... One amongst many, hello, yes, I'm here, and honestly, to, to be frank, to be real with you for a second, it's probably going to be very similar heroes to the heroes in Season 13, or at least the ones at the end of Season 13, because we did have a patch, like, yeah. halfway through Season 13 that shook things up ever so slightly, so we've got a few winners, a few well, losers think, coming out of things. I can't, yeah, I think there's some benefits to this, though, because kind of we're, we're almost settling into that patch now, so when the next season rolls out, as, as we know, there is literally a two-hour gap, this is, this is tomorrow, guys, when it drops, or indeed today, whenever you're watching the video, but... Yeah, I, I, it's kind of settling in. Anyway, let's get stuck into this because we've got a lot of heroes to go over. We're going to start with the tanks to begin with. Josh, tell me about D.Va. Uh, diva has been good since forever and will continue to be good <laughs> until forever. Yeah. Uh, Defense Matrix is a very, very good ability. This is not going to change. D.Va is good. You generally want to have a D.Va on your team. Even, and like You can still play Reinhardt D.Va. Reinhardt Zarya might be slightly more optimal. We'll get into that. But D.Va is still good. Like If you have a D.Va on your team, you're probably in safe hands. She ain't going anywhere. Uh, uh, yeah, if you play D.Va as well, guys, you're fine. I wouldn't really worry about it until they change Defense Matrix. D.Va will always be in the game. I mean, I cannot really see a scenario where she's not played. Yeah, um, if they introduce unless... hero bands, you might get banned. Like, that's it. That's <laughs> literally it. Hero bands. Hero bands. Yeah, yeah, true. All right, let's move on. Arissa. What do we think about Arissa? Uh, one of the most w highest win rate tanks in the game, but that's more because she is a specialist absolute unit, I suppose. She is just like... You bring her out on a couple of specific maps, you bring her out on a couple of specific instances, and she's generally very good at those. Not really like the full-time main tank that you would expect, but I don't see Orisa's place changing too much in the game. She kind of just sits there, big tanky target, big tanky thing, very good at her mobile compositions. With Bastion starting to creep in, like Bastion comp starting to bubble up a little bit more, maybe she might see a little bit more play. If you are an Orisa player, you're still probably feeling okay, you might be frustrated at some aspects of the game, but generally, yeah, she's in an okay place. Yeah, I think Arissa's not really a hero you want to kind of one-trick or main to some extent because she's only really useful in certain niche situations. Uh, she can work on every map and every hero can do all of that stuff, you know, kind of thing. But there are a lot of times where you probably want to take the Reinhardt instead of the Arissa. But generally, they there is transferable skills that, yes, I know Arissa's got a projectile weapon and, and whatnot, but it's still kind of the same thing. Typically, if you're an Arissa player, you're probably a Reinhardt player. And I guess that leads us into our next hero. That's Reinhardt. Where do we think he is right now? Better than he used to be. Uh, he's definitely oh, sort yeah. of seeing a nice little rise. I mean, you are more of a Reinhardt player than I am these days, mm. so you can perhaps inform better on this. But the Brigitte change has definitely def like made him way more, at least, fun to play and stronger overall. Yeah, I mean, like, uh, to bring this back onto Orissa as well, Reinhardt, I would use him... It, 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 he's almost like my go-to tank, unless... We've got a highly mobile team, in which case I will take the Winston. There are certain maps where I just want to roll the Winston anyway, like things like uh, uh, Numbani attack. Uh, I probably would look at rolling the Winston on the first point uh, and things like that. However, the Reinhardt is in a much better place than he was before. You still can get bullied and you still kind of do feel helpless at times because you do depend on your team, right? You can't just go in there and sort of make a crazy play unless you're, you know, pulling the old Reinhardt. I'm hiding around the corner. I'm going to do a, a, an Earth Shatter or something ridiculous. Or that the thing, this is literally my pet peeve. I'm going off on a tangent here, but I hate it when Reinhardt players wait on Hannah Mora. This happened to me today, by the way. Oh, wait yes. on Hannah Mora. You know what I'm about to say, don't you? Like, yes. you're on defense, first point, and they wait by the mega health and they charge back through. Don't do do that guys it's stupid please don't do it i hate it anyway yeah reinhardt i think's in a good place um but you're probably going to be playing reinhardt and orissa to be fair they're both okay but reinhardt yeah he's definitely better because he doesn't get stunned through his barrier which he did before from the brig which wasn't really great but that's not an issue no more so yeah he is he is well it's not effectively he is just flat out better because of yeah, most of the heroes fewer doomfists in the game as well mccree's a little mm, bit doomfist, more dangerous yeah. but mccree's always like I know Fan the Hammer is stronger now, but even before then, Fan the Hammer was still kind of a threat to tanks. And speaking of someone vulnerable, perhaps to Fan the Hammer, Winstonio would be next up. And he's been having a bit of a tough time. I think it's just because Dive Meta is like completely almost imploded on itself. Like you said before, Numbani A, like definitely bring out the Winston for that. You need the mobility. Yeah. But past that, very, very rare to see Winston get picked up. Yeah, it's hard. Like, Winston is in a, in a bit of a weird position. Um, what's happened is Reinhardt has just literally taken the Winston slot in a lot of comps on a lot of maps. So you've got Reinhardt and Orissa, and then Winston sort of is this kind of outlier. Um, he's still usable, but I think Winston does live or die by what the hell is going on in the meta. So I don't know. He's okay. Let's move on to Roadhog. What do we think about him? So he's had his hook changes and all kinds of wonderful stuff has happened to him recently. Where do we see him in the next season? 
still niche, I think, still very niche. Like, you bring him out on Ilio as well, you bring him out on Sanctum, on uh, Nepal, you bring him out on maps where there's pits and things like that you can pull people into and stuff. He's still like a big threatening tanky dude, but he only really works in those Arita Hog comps as well. Like, King's Row A, for example, you can actually run like Arita Hog and try and get something going with that as well, especially at like mid tier ranks, I suppose. Uh, at high ranks, the you know, goats is going to be more of a threat. Teams are more likely to just go goats at the end of the day. And then Roadhog starts falling apart a lot more just because he gets run over basically by the comp, which is kind of a shame for a supposed tank buster. But yeah, he's not really going to change too much, I think. McCree as well is going to be a bigger threat to him with that stun available. That's yeah. going to cause even more problems. So maybe actually slightly worse next season overall. So not good times for Roadhog, maybe. All right, Wrecking Ball. <laughs> Yeah, Wrecking oh, Ball. God. Moving on, ladies and gentlemen. So, uh, Wrecking mm. Ball is just going to be Wrecking Ball, guys. Uh, he's not really, like, he's not been buffed, he's not been nerfed, but he's just such a weird hero. I I don't, I mean, I have fun playing him, and I guess that's the main thing, right? <laughs> it's, it's a really, really weird one with Wrecking Ball. He's such a literal oddball that it's so hard to place him and like what he, what he actually does what he actually brings to the team i don't think right now like especially the meta isn't there for him to play with like if we were in a really really aggro dive meta then wrecking ball can start coming out again like wrecking ball's only saving grace is that sombra is literally in probably the worst position she's been in statistically forever and so yeah. she very rarely gets played even if there is a wrecking ball on the team so that's like his only but saving even grace, then but... wrecking ball it's not like you're seeing him everywhere and it's not like he's super meta or he's super strong he's just a really weird pick you often pick wrecking ball if things are going to crap and it's like oh god i've got to get back to the point and i was playing zarya i'm just going to pick wrecking ball because i'll get there quicker because yeah. we've already got a diva you know that that's kind of it i mean he does, he does come out of left field and he does mix things up when he appears on the field, but I, yeah, it's not really like, I, I, I don't expect to see very, much change. i some very salty Wrecking Ball mains in the comments mm. at the moment, and I'm just going to ask you barefaced, what what do you do? Like, literally just inform me. I want to be informed. <laughs> what what do you do? What what do you bring to the team? What are you actually doing that is different than a Zarya or a Diva or even like a Winston, for example? What are you adding? Where's the value? Because I, I want to know. They're really having a fun time. That's all that matters. Yeah. Right, Zarya. When Zarya. do you see this badass from Russia? Oh, baby. I, I generally like it when Zarya's in meta. And here's the thing, right? Zarya, like, I, I like Zarya. She's like one of the first heroes who I didn't think I would play. And then I started playing her in the beta and I fell in love pretty much straight away because she's awesome. Uh, yeah, Zarya's going to be pretty strong. She's my first golden weapon. Like, Reinhardt is good in the meta at the moment. So Zarya's also going to be good in the meta. The two pair up extremely well. Zarya still has very, very powerful ultimate, very powerful damage output. She is the engine that drives GOAT's DPS quite often, is sort of the phrase I like to use. Still very good all around. I know a couple of people might want to see enough, but I mean, she only swung in recently when Reinhardt got better, when GOAT's got better. So she hasn't been like the omnipresent threat that D.Va has. And I, I think she's fine. I think she's in a good place. I think everyone should be around Zarya's level, to be honest. She's like a good benchmark. Yeah, she's really nice to, to play against and play with. That's always been Zarya's sort of beautiful thing to me. It's such a beautiful design for a hero. You see the bubble and think, okay, I shouldn't charge the Zarya, but sometimes you could burn through the bubble. I don't know. She's just beautiful. Right, let's move into the support. So let's talk about Anna. Possibly, well, there's no possibly about this. The best support in the game right now. She is extremely good and extremely variable depending on what rank you are at. So yeah, <laughs> Anna is... Like, again, I've got, like, the statistics open. They are from overbuff. They're not 100% accurate. Use your caveats. Apply. But in general, you know, the higher the ranks you go, the more Anna starts winning. Like, even towards Master, she's actually quite near the bottom of the overall win rates. But still very, very strong overall. Anti-heal grenade is an amazing ability. Nano boost is incredibly good at the moment. Her healing output is phenomenal. She has an insanely high pick rate as well at the moment. Very much in meta. Not really going to change as well as far as we know. Should be good pretty much from now until the end of Season 14, unless some major patch changes come in. Or, oh, like you said, hero bans come in. I mean, that's like one of the only things I could probably stop, to be honest. I, I, unless some sort of insane dive meta comes back. Who knows? Anyway, let's move on to Brigitte. Where do we see her? Now, she's got a... She's an interesting position, right? Because she's literally been nerfed ever since she's been live. <laughs> it's like nerf and nerf and nerf. Um, she, Yeah, she's, she's, she's still kind of decent. Kind of decent is a touch of uh, an understatement. <laughs> she is incredibly good. So I think in graphs, I like my graphs. I'm, I'm a big fan of graphs, and I've been looking at like the win rate graphs and stuff. And win rates hasn't, like Brigitte's hasn't really changed 
at all. It's gone down slightly no. with the nerfs, but she's still extremely good. She's still one of the most pick supports. She's still one of the strongest supports overall. Sure, you can't stun Reinhardt to do berries, but in general, when fights start breaking down, you can absolutely still get in, stun people, kill people, no problem. The McCree buff is a slight nerf to her as well. Maybe it's just going to take more time because McCree is like slowly getting picked up by more and more people. Yeah. And as that happens, Brigitte might start dropping off. But at the moment, we still seem to be in the Brigitte meta, in the, the chokehold of that Swedish brawny lady. And yeah, she's not going anywhere, I think. Well, yeah, moral of the story is she's not going anywhere. <laughs> it's a gentleman, so if you want to play Brig, then just knock yourself out. Next up is Lucio. Now, I quite like the fact that Lucio is back in the game again. Uh, I love Lucio. A bit of wall riding magic and all that jazzy stuff. So, uh, yeah, where do we see Lucio? Uh, still very much like the... I really like him on control. I think that he's almost borderline essential on control, especially unless a lot of those maps have like pits and pitfalls and stuff you can boot people into and get a lot of value. Uh, Night Market is always a favorite when you go straight to the point and they go around the outside and you boot them all off and that feels amazing. Lucio just seems pretty good all around. Like, you never really feel too bad about having a Lucio and generally like another quote-unquote main support on your team generally feel like you're in safe hands. Yeah. So yeah, I agree. I think Lucio is still a fine pick. It's like a secondary support. Make sure you understand your speed boost. Make sure you understand the tempo of the game. And when you do that, Lucio feels great. He feels fantastic. Mm. I think that's the key thing. Like, don't play Lucio, guys. If you've got, like, Zen, and then you pick Lucio as the next healer, or you've got Brig, and then you pick Lucio, you need to pick a main healer at that point. You can't really run Lucio with Brig or Lucio with Zen. There's not going to be enough support there or enough healing. Uh, so in those situations, you probably need to look at Anna, Mercy, or Moira. Anyway... Let's move on to, and in fact, before I go off Lucio, speed boost is a fantastic ability. One of the best abilities in the game as well. It, not even when you're boosting, just when you've got the speed on. It's so, so good. Anyway, let's uh, let's move on to Mercy. This is the most controversial here support in the game right now. Uh, probably hero in the game, you could say. Uh, we've done a lot of stuff on Mercy. We've gone into massive detail on changes we think she needs. But the reality is, looking at her going into Season 14, it's kind of the same old thing. You're going to get value with a Farah for the Pharmacy combo. You are going to get some value in certain situations as well, but the problem always comes back to, is it more value than Anna or Moira? Now, what Josh touched on earlier with Anna was quite interesting, saying that, hey, through the different tiers of the game, Anna, you know, it's not like she's winning all the games in gold, platinum, and, and diamond. She only really starts to come into her own in uh, uh, Master. Uh, however, a Moira is going to put out a ton of healing in that case. A Mercy, is she going to be able to compete with the Moira there? <sighs> it's, Mercy. it's a tough one. Like Mercy is kind of, you know, Mercy's problems at the moment, from the statistics point of view, are more based on like, well, her win rate seems okay overall. She does okay in general. It's more the issue of, well, is she fun to play? Is she engaging to play? Do you feel like you have as much impact as you could be having when you play her, for example? It's generally those old problems that we have. And I also, I want to touch back on something that Cruz said that I think is startlingly intelligent for that lad, which is that Mercy is in a good <laughs> spot. It's just the meta is not in a good spot for Mercy. So yeah. you need other heroes to change for Mercy to then really come into her own once again. Mercy thrived in the sniper meta, for example. She was incredibly strong back then. Where she is now, she doesn't really work with goats, and as a result, has kind of just dropped out of favor completely with, you know, a lot of the higher tier community. Like you mentioned as well, Moira gets a lot of, basically, I would say, like, easy value. Like, it's very, very easy yeah. to put out a lot of healing on Moira, and as a result, well, this sort of naturally leads into Moira. Moira just seems kind of like the better pick at the moment across Well, the yeah, ranks. I mean... It's just because of the tanky comps most of the time, isn't it? If you've got a brawly tanky comp, Moira is always going to probably outheal the Mercy. Well, she's, she just is going to outheal the Mercy there because Mercy doesn't have AoE or splash healing, so it's super difficult for her to contribute there. So you're always going to pick the Moira. So yeah, this takes into Moira. Where do we see Moira? Uh, just really, really solid overall. Like, the only time that you really wouldn't pick a Moira is if you've got, like, a Farah or a Widowmaker, for example. That's when you really yep. want to bring out that Mercy pick. But otherwise, yeah, Moira is just going to be good. She puts out a lot of healing. And I notice this when I play Moira, and I think this is what the Mercy players want, which is that you feel like you can have a meaningful impact as well. You sort of get a measure and a feel for the team you're in, and you go, okay, maybe I actually don't need to heal as much. Maybe we just need a little bit more damage here. Maybe the Genji just needs that little bit of help, perhaps, to finish off the targets he needs to then get his snowball going and then he can suddenly kill everybody. Moira is very good at yeah. providing little advantages here and there like that. And as a result, I think Moira is in a fantastic place. If you play a lot of Moira, feel pretty good going into Season 14. Uh, the only sort of caveat with Moira is that if you're in Grandmaster, learn to perhaps move away from the Moira. There is like a meme in GM of the, the Moira main, the boosted Moira main, because when you start getting to high-level players, they know how to recognize the weaknesses of Moira. Once you use Fade, you are so vulnerable, you are so easy to kill, and they will go in for the kill then. 
Hmm. All right, Zen, let's talk about big bad boy Zen. <laughs> Zen just is is great. He's been great forever. He's still really, really, really good. The only He's kind of like Diva, right, isn't he? Like, if you were yes. going to main a hero, you could main Diva. You could main Zen. Oh, well, I say main, I mean one trick, and nobody would ever care. <laughs> yeah, he's just, he's really good all around. Like, I'm really glad he's a part of my hero pool, to, to say it lightly. Like, he's... The thing with Zen is Discord Orb is just very powerful. Like, you press a button and it automatically homes onto our target and basically removes 33% of someone's health, uh, hit point pool. Straight away, one button. Really good ability. Really, really good ability. His healing's reliable, his damage output is fantastic on par with a number of DPSs. His only weaknesses is that he's just very vulnerable on his own, but team comps at the moment are very tanky, very durable, play around each other quite a lot. He's just good. He's just very, very good. Again, sort of a benchmark support, perhaps, that, you know, other heroes need well, to be I, on that I mean, level. remember with Zen, uh, I mean, Discord is obviously super powerful, but remember during Dive Comp, who was the, 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 the support in that all the time? Yeah. Like with Zen. And you would think that Zen would be vulnerable to this and get destroyed. And yeah, he did sometimes, but he still has the chance to play around it, especially if he's backed up with his team. And like you just said, the meta is very nice for Zen right now because he's nice and safe. He's secure with all these lovely tanks and he doesn't die. All right. Let's move on to the DPS. Let's go into Ash. Where do we see Ash? Ash has done surprisingly well. Like, I was personally pretty shocked when I actually looked at the statistics overall, and she's actually winning quite a lot more than I was expecting. <laughs> so, yeah, she's actually pretty good overall. Like, she does feel like she's playing slight second fiddle at the moment to McCree. McCree's, like, edging in there more and more and more. But I'd say, like, the revelation I had over, like, literally the last 20 minutes was that I think Ash killed Soldier 76. I think Ash completely yeah, he's dead. It. We'll get onto Soldier, but Soldier is basically dead. Yeah, I agree. Uh, all right, let's move to Bastion. So Bastion has been buffed, and uh, yes, Bastion is really fun to play. <laughs> really good as well. Bastion, yeah, he's going to be... <laughs> I think we're going to go through like the second well, phase. So when Overwatch first came yeah. out, right, there was a very lucrative yeah, yeah, business yeah, yeah. in the YouTuber sphere of making <laughs> guides on how to beat business. Bastion. And I've noticed already that there are a lot of guys now popping up on how to beat Bastion all <laughs> over again, and it's literally just the same thing. It's exactly the same thing. He's a little bit stronger than he used to be before, but again, all the same old strategies do kind of work. The big difference is that Pulse Bomb no longer is as good as it used to be as well, so that sort of option's always gone. But honestly, Tracer was never really, in my mind, the main answer. So, like, Bastion, yeah, it's just going to be like a learning experience as people deal with him again. Like, I remember talking with Yustai not too long ago when Bastion was buffed. And it's like, Bastion still kind of won games across almost every rank anyway. Like, mm. even before the buff. So, now that he's just getting picked again, I think it's just more people are going, Oh my god, Bastion's a thing. Ah, how do we deal with that? And then you get that frustration of, Oh my god, guys, I can't believe we're losing to Bastion. Oh my god. Well, I mean, yeah, it's impossible for teams to get together and deal with the Bastion. Stop That's the problem. Me. And that works at every rank as well, guys. So yeah, Bastion. <laughs> I mean, he feels really super strong. But like you said, it's just that feeling of playing Bastion where if you've not played him for so long, then suddenly you play him. It's just like you're deleting people. It's like, oh my god, this is ridiculous. But Bastion's always kind of done that anyway. So yeah, he's better. But it's not like we're going to see some sort of insane Bastion meta because the same counters still apply. However, bringing out a cheeky Bastion can often yield quite good results. Okay, Doomfist is dead, Josh. Talk to me about Doomfist. Uh, yeah, he's definitely fallen off a bit of a cliff in terms of popularity and in terms of win rate as well. It certainly dropped down quite considerably. Uh, yeah, unless you are like a diehard Doomfist player, I would say avoid him. He is going to be something for the Doomfist mains these days. And at the moment, especially like apparently like the pull isn't even working anymore on the seismic slam these days so it's like yeah you can't get that combo working anymore a lot of his kit just feels completely different feels completely like abnormal compared to how it used to be give this one a while let the doomfist hardcore die hard mains go and try and figure that one out but at the moment i would say yeah probably you know if you were a doomfist main before everybody probably hates you and you should probably change hero now <laughs> Because I agree. you oh. made every support <laughs> No, I don't agree. What are you talking about? No, no, get <laughs> lost. I, I've got a golden fist on one of my accounts. Yeah, whatever, oh, do God. fist. He, it was, the, the nerfs are too harsh off Blizzard, basically. So maybe they'll do something to him in the future. We don't know. We'll have to wait and see. Or maybe Blizzard just don't like him. Who knows? Talk to me about Genji, though. This is a funky one. Genji's been okay. Like, Genji's oftentimes... Genji's the... always been okay, hasn't he? This is the thing with Genji, isn't it? He's... The th issue with Genji, like, Genji's only weakness is that Goats exists. He's not that good yeah. against Goats. If you're playing Genji against Goats, you're probably getting Dragon Blades every two minutes, you're probably doing a ton of damage, but you're not killing anybody! 
Stop it, please. Because all you're doing is poking, 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 poking. You're hurting these tanks, but they have so much healing, so much durability, so much survivability. They have Brigitte armor on top of that on all the supports as well. So even if you nano blade, you still perhaps are not going to get the results you want. And as a result, Genji against goats is a no-no, but Genji against everything else? Yeah, he's still great, especially with Anna in the meta. Nano blade is still okay. I still prefer nano Winston's myself, but nano blade is still a viable option. Genji, very, very good projectile DPS at the moment. Genji's, I mean, if you are legitimately a pro Genji, guys, you can continue to play Genji and you will get a lot of results. He still is good, um, but obviously you need to be good. But it's one of those series. It's like Tracer, right? If you're a phenomenally good Tracer, you can still have a massive impact on the game. Anyway, let's move on to Hanzo, Josh's favorite Shimada brother. Oh, God. Where do we see this bad boy? <laughs> uh, he's, yeah, he's going to be very, very good for a while now. He's just a solid all-round DPS he pick. He explodes the highest... tanks. This is yeah, the thing. He kills yeah. the hell out when of When he busts out Storm Arrow, it's like, oh, dear. The damage is ridiculous, and it's really easy, isn't it, to hit Divas, Reinhardt, whatever. The big fat targets, you just pile into them. The damage you can do is incredible. You can also play on high ground, you can get away from Reinhardt, you can get away from, you know, if Divas used her boost and you just climb up something, then you can get away from her DPS and stuff like that. He's just very good all round, very good ultimate as well. Yeah, can't really fault him if you are a Hanzo main at the moment. I probably don't like you that much myself, but I probably have a good I got time. a golden bow. Shut up, Josh. He doesn't know anything, ladies and gentlemen. Right, moving on. So Hanzo's in a good place. Junkrat. <laughs> All right, Speaking I'm going to take the Junkrat spammers. one here. Yeah, okay, well, yeah. Tell oh. us about Junkrat. Junkrat is Junkrat. the same old Junkrat. Um, so you're just going to use them in certain situations. Things like I can evolve first point defense come to my mind. Um, maybe you could use him on, I don't know, Temple of Anubis first point or even second point. But you're not really, th this isn't really a hero you want to just like invest a ton of time into because when you start getting better at the game, people can very easily play around the Junkrat and that's the problem. But there are certain comps, you know, if you pair him with like Arissas and stuff like that, so he's nice and safe. He can spam around corners. He's okay. You can pair him with a Mercy, actually. He's still surprisingly quite strong with a Mercy. Which, by the way, Ash is still quite strong with a Mercy damage boost as well. Uh, but yeah, Junkrat, I don't really see much change here. But you can still use him in certain situations. Now, the thing with the tank-heavy comps you've got going on uh, now is... Yeah, you can get your Riptide pretty quick. But is it really worth the trade-off considering you might not have the kill potential during the fight? I don't know. But still a niche pick. Still okay. But I don't really see any kind of major change. And I'm going to not even give you a chance to reply because we're going to go into McCree. Because talking of not seeing a major change, what the hell is going to happen to McCree? McCree has been buffed quite considerably, but I feel like this is more of a perceived buff than an actual hmm. massive major change. Like people are just spamming right click into everything and going, hang on, yeah, this works really well. This does a lot of damage. And it kind of always did a lot of damage previously as well. The actual, you know, things that he beats haven't changed that much and that dramatically. He shreds tanks a lot better now, certainly, and that's going to help him in the current meta. But he always was pretty good against tanks overall, regardless. So it's like. It's not as if that extra little bit of damage here and there is going to make that huge of a difference here, I think. I think McCree well, is just like enjoying a renaissance of people going, hang on, yeah, no, he's actually really good. That's maybe a sensible way of looking at it, but the way I look at McCree is McCree is Ash and Reaper, and Ash is a better soldier. So why use Reaper or soldier? <laughs> That's what I'm looking at here. Yeah. Because you have got that you have got that potential to delete tanks. I mean, you think of his damage. Um, again, not accounting for armor, as you said before, but uh, 660 damage you can do um, with Van the Hammer, right? Where mm -hmm. the fire and reload and, and whatnot. If you're super cheeky, you can actually pop dead eye and reload again. So you could go for like the big 900 odd plus damage. That's obviously in a very uh, specific scenario. But yeah, so McCree to me, he is reliable DPS if you've got the aim. He does have that ability to melt large targets in front of him and also like if he gets the flashbang onto a tracer or even onto a doomfist now again this is more punishment for doomfist you can just fan the hammer into them and do an absolute ton of damage so yeah mccree is in a good position a better position than he was before so i mean if you see a mccree on your team don't be like oh my god guys we're throwing this leads me into the next hero this is may where do we see may May is still a really, really odd one. I think May's problem is more perception based than anything. Yes, I uh, agree. The, I the absolutely best agree. point that I heard about no. May was that it's May is more like the issue with May is more that people start throwing and people don't want to do the complicated thing. Like people don't want to do the difficult thing when playing with a May. Don't want to play slightly unorthodox. Don't want to play around the wall. Don't want to do that kind of stuff. She is still an incredibly good defense hero. She is, is still incredibly, incredibly good on two CP on defense on offense. Okay, that's slightly like pushing your luck a bit there, but on defense she is incredibly good. So yeah, in like anywhere there's a choke point, if there's a May on the team, you just sort of go, yeah, fair enough. Like try and play around the wall, try and play around it, because she's still pretty good. 
Yeah, I think my uh, one of my favorite things to do with May is play on Temple of Anubis second point defense with May. Like you just destroy teams with her. It's so easy to just cut them off on the bridge as they try and push or even block them in the tunnel. It's so good. Um, but yeah, she's very situational. Things like Li Zhang Tower, um, can come out a command center, control center, whatever it's called. Really good there because obviously you can push up close, you can cut people off. But like you said, Josh, she's a difficult one because it means you have to play with the hero. And I think the issue with that is a lot of people are like, well, I don't want to play how you want me to play. I want to play how I want to play. So yeah. Yeah. I, I'm going to avoid the May, which is not great. But I still think May is actually a bit of a dark horse and a pretty good pick. Okay, Farah, what do we see Farah doing next season? Uh, tank busting still pretty good overall. Like, I think Farah's in a good place. I think the buffs have actually worked out in her favor, especially in current meta. Ash's existence still causes some problems, but just to, like, very, very quickly wrap up on a couple of other heroes, because we are rambling quite long. Widowmaker's in a bad position at the moment, for example, so you're going to see fewer Widowmakers. Ash can get rushed down quite badly as well, so Ash still kind of exists, but kind of a threat. Soldier 76, you're not going to see much of as well. So her counters aren't really that present, and if you whap out a Farah yeah. every so often, very, very good flex pick. Yeah, it can. It's like a surprise fire. It's like, ba-boom, I'm here, let's go. I like Romri Alto as well, really good. Reaper, where do we see Reaper? Oh, dear. Exactly oh, the dear. same as the yeah, previous season. Like, if he's great if you can get him to the places he needs to be. He actually has one of the highest win rates in Grandmaster, but I think that's just because, like, one person plays him extremely well there, and as a result, his win rate is massively inflated. Uh, <laughs> yeah, he's just very, very niche, very, very situational, has trouble getting to places. He's good when he's good, but he's bad in almost every other situation, and that's kind of Reaper in a nutshell. Needs something. Yeah, I mean, it, Give him it smoke runs with grenades. like 30% life steal, which is ridiculous. Give him smoke grenades. Okay, let's move on. Give him smoke grenades. Yeah. Don't play Reaper. Guy. Well, I don't know. You can play Reaper sometimes, but whatever. Not super strong. Uh, and then I'm just going to go to Sombra because there is a hero before Sombra. It's called Soldier 76, but it actually doesn't exist in the game anymore. Well, Sombra is in probably, <laughs> statistically speaking, Sombra no, is probably soldier, in the worst position soldier, that she's ever on, been go in. Go back to Soldier. Well, so, We've got to like, discuss Soldier. Come on. Do we? Well, I mean, We've forgotten oh, him. Poor He's soldier. forgotten about. Who's Soldier? Who is this hero? This this hero is like entry-level DPS. That's the, the only thing I can see him being used for right now. You've got the sprint, you've got the heal. But apart from that, he had the buff to his spread and his um, he does more damage before the, the damage fall off on his, uh, and his spread. But it's it's just like, there is no point to this hero because there are better heroes in the game at doing his job. Yeah, I mean, Ash literally has an auto aimbot as well that you can set up a crossfire with yourself. Yeah, much like, better. Much so better ultimate, even Nano Visor yeah. isn't the the stomp it used to no. be because Nano Visor is Bob. terrible. Right, moving on, Sombra. <laughs> Sombra, there we go. Sombra Big like soldier, I played please. Sombra for an entire season. I'm very sad to see Sombra has the same issue that May has, but Ooh, also has the same issue yeah. that Tracer has as well, and that she is very bad against armor. But Agita exists in the game, armor exists in the game, therefore Sombra is very tough. So she's unorthodox and has the weakness of having like a a spray weapon. Well, this is the, the, the kind of batch of heroes going into here. So, like, May, Sombra, Symmetra, Torb, they all suffer from this, this problem. So, Sim, um, I, I mean, I'll quickly go over Sim. She is still, can be highly effective if your team want to play with her. If they don't, then she's an absolute waste of time. She doesn't do enough damage. She doesn't really do enough of anything. She's got one of the best ultimates in the game. But if your team are not going to use the teleport or you're not going to abuse her literal best ability then there is no point using this hero i have i have played with the symmetra and and we've done some really good stuff we've done uh i i i like actually teleporting through the window on hannah Mora first point attack is actually quite good especially if the enemy team have got a may but that requires for your team to actually get together and just go hey guys let's counter the may with a symmetra teleport it's it's a lot to actually go on in solo queue so sim is still in a really iffy place in my mind can work most of the time ah Torb is the other one. Now, Torb, I'll let you go over Torb, Josh, but Torb, Torb is I think he's a lot not better as bad than as he was. People yeah. expect him to be. Like, he's definitely, yeah, not definitely not as bad as he was. Kind of good all round at the moment. Definitely still prioritize him on defense rather than on offense. He's still shaky on offense. Like, even with the rapid turret deploy, he's still not as good. On defense, he's great. Just throw turrets around, do some damage, spam your abilities when you need them. Really, really good all round hero. Molten Core is a great ultimate. I love it. And yeah, good stuff. Yeah, I think Torb is pretty good. Tracer, oh dear. Uh, yeah, poor Tracer. She has situational uses, and the situational use is this. If the enemy does not have a Brigitte and is playing an immobile team, you can absolutely go to town on them. The moment you see that Brigitte go out, you swap. Like, no ifs or no buts, no, oh, I've got gold damage. It doesn't matter. You are not killing anything anymore. You are only killing things with pulse bombs, if that Get rid of Tracer once Pagita comes out. <laughs> and remember, McCree's fan the hammer does more damage than the pulse bomb. All right, then moving on. Widow is the last hero on our list. Where do we see Big Bad Widow? 
still like exactly the same one almost yeah. as mercy like a victim of the meta where if everyone's playing tanks with more than 300 hit points well she's not really going to be useful like that's that's yeah. the thing with widowmaker uh she's in a kind of a bad position at the moment more due to the meta doesn't actually need changes like if you buffed widow it'll be crazy so like leave <laughs> yeah, her alone yeah. oh my god wait for the all meta right, to right. settle okay and okay to end this video then josh we're gonna get who is the biggest winner do you think and who is the biggest loser winner give it me Biggest winner, uh, <laughs> Bukita. <laughs> <laughs> okay, biggest loser. Doomfist. Oh my god. Ladies and gentlemen, let us know what you think about all of this in the comments below. Let us know where you see the heroes, where you see your main, and all of that good stuff. I've been Salos, you can follow me on Twitter, which is at UnitLostGaming, and he's been... Josh, you can follow me on Twitter at one underscore amongst many. It's been beautiful, guys, and we'll catch you on the next one. Toodaloo. Bye.